uh, as we saw, I mean, the three, the three, uh, the three steps that you told us. Just yes, one second, I'll just go, down, go back to it. Correct. Brother. Notice of removal to the speaker. Yes. Resolutions given to the governor and yes. the act of being sworn in as uh, CM. Correct. There's one step earlier, probably one one step which you can also add there, which was the governor's trust vote about. communication. I'm grateful. Miss. I'm grateful. Right. Now, four step there, procedure. Suppose, suppo uh, you know, notice of removal of the speaker, we are not really called upon to adjudicate upon the validity of the. Except, except in Navam Arabia, your lordship, if your lordship chooses to refer, would have that issue. Navam Arabia, if we choose. In the broad, no, no, I'm saying it arises. I'm not saying your lordship may have to for this case. I'm saying that's the core issue in. No, no, I'm saying, Malus, it's an issue. Which governor, the know, governor right? asked for a trust vote. Yes. Two ways of looking at it. Well, the governor had material to call for a trust vote, in which case a further issue would arise as to whether he was justified in calling upon Shinde to form the government. Pinpointing, picking out a person and saying... Picking out a person, because correct. even assuming that the governor had material to call for a trust vote, what is the basis for picking up Shinde? Second, that the governor had no material to ask for a trust vote. That there was no valid material at all That's on the basis question. of those three circumstances. That's a core question. And well, it's, uh, that goes to the heart of the matter. Well, if I may digress for 30 seconds, Mr. Dushar Mehta was right when he quoted the couplet. But perhaps didn't realize that the second sentence applies against him. He quoted Bashir Bhadra to say, Chup rahe to galat fehmiyo or galat fehmiya or bhi badhi. Usne wo bhi suna jo mene kaha nahi. Usne wo bhi suna jo mene kaha nahi. Malas, the governor in his letter at 326 PDF <laughs> talks of a resolution to exit the government which doesn't exist at page 55 of the resolution itself there. So he's hearing yeah, things, Joe. The, the resolution doesn't say that we are exiting the government. Yes. So he heard something. We had said, wanted to. <laughs> well, I found a more appropriate one for Mr. Mehta. I found a more appropriate fares for Mr. Mehta. Not Bashir. Bhatt. So the only question was whether there was a valid exercise of power by the governor to call for a trust vote. And if we, but what happens if we come to the conclusion that there was no valid exercise of power by the governor to call a trust? Everything vote? falls. Everything falls is very... Uh, no, no, I'll be, I'll be dealing with Bhama. That's Actually, that's the core question. Your lordships is saved a lot of unnecessary exercise. If your lordship comes to that conclusion, plus follows Bomai, which in any case is... So then you, according to you, what? We reinstate uh, the... the Just read, of, straight away, let me just change my tack and go to Bomai. But you resign, no? No, no. That's I covered in my note directly. Five reasons. Justice Shah asked me that one in the beginning. Your lordship asked me that. I Straight away answer. That is actually red herring. My resignation and not facing the Malad's uh, trust vote is irrelevant. Completely. But that's Mr. No, Malad, I'll, I'll deal with it. So let me deal with because it. So let me deal with that. If you, it's like the court being told that you reinstate a government which has... No, no, Malad, it is... It's an acknowledgement by I, you. I hear your lordship loudly. You resign. It's a question asked earlier and it is actually a plausible looking thing, but it's actually irrelevant. I'll show that in a minute. No, no, Mr. Kapsil. How can, just hypothetically, yes. Yes, yes. how can the court reinstate a chief minister who did not even face uh, the floor of test? Your lordship is not reinstating anybody. Your and what will, what will be the consequences? Your lordship is and should and does, and Bomai says it more graphically, restore status quo ante. We That's would. the meaning of a... But uh, Ms. Dr. Singhvi, it would have been a logical thing to do. That's where we are, you know, it would be a logical thing to do, provided you had lost the trust vote on the floor of the Lord, assembly. Uh, Lordship, I just flag that. I mean, right, I because answer. then, clearly, you have been ousted from uh, power I, because of a trust vote which is set aside. Correct. Duty bound to set aside. Lordship, and I believe, Alice, that Right. Now, our problem is, look at the look at the intellectual conundrum. Yes, yes. That it's not that you have been ousted from power as a result of a trust vote which was wrongly summoned by the governor. You chose not to, you chose, you, for whatever reason, you didn't want to face the well, trust I, vote. I, I faced that squarely. Allow me, Malus, I'll change my sequence and come to this first right now. May I, Malus? Because straight away your lordship's conscience should be satisfied. This is a red herring. It should not deter, should, will not deter in law your lordships. If your lordship comes to the conclusion of the other one. Give me just five minutes on this. May I end the first part, Malus? 
that is well as this uh, affirmative and negative code. Oh, yes, that, that you with, with only one, with only. Now, Dr. Singh, we we are about three. We are seventeen minutes past to eighteen minutes, closing on eighteen minutes past three p.m. Tuesday, well as. I think three thirty will close now. I think we have we have seen everything now. No, no, Malus, you're not saying. I'm asking. Three thirty well, is now Malus three twenty. I've done one out of my seven points. Malus, this is a matter no, of one more. I'm not now going to, to conclude. I mean, Malus, I, I can't just go in. Conclude, Malus, but it is a very useful in, when your lordship asks questions. All your now is very your points are really alaps of your. Uh, no, no, Malus, with respect, you are you are the joiner council. Malus, I have argued one out of eight points. I would not I'll otherwise take time. And Malus, your lordships, it is not intended well, Singh, we, to stop so your lordships, Malus, well querying because your queries have actually make us think. All right, Doctor Singh, we are always very precise. You are always very Malus, precise. Now go into the next point. Your lordships' compliment is intended to render me speechless. Malus, I am not going to be. No, speechless. No, 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 no. No, it's not. Like that. Malus, Doctor Singh, there is too much. The point is, this is there is a lot of. Stuff that we have to reflect on now, and we just want to. So well, maybe your lordship will just a little over four o'clock. Summarize it for us so that we can have. Let me so speed along, and Malus, your lordship may give me a few minutes after four minutes. See, I am very keen to finish, Malus. I am not till now, Malus. I have not repeated a single point. I give your lordship two facets. Now, not interrupt you. Go ahead. Yes. So, well, let me end this first point by saying, let me end the first point by asking myself a reverse question. What happens in my first point of uh, affirmative and negative? If your lordships were to accept their interpretation, that's a good way of answering my Malus proposition. Namely, your lordship will have nothing left in the tenth schedule. How does your lordship operate? Both the four-step or the three-step becomes the norm, and will be followed in every case to defeat the tenth schedule. Got that's my first point. Second point on resignation. Now, Malus, the most important thing is it's a prior challenge. The illegal act of the governor is a prior pending sub judice challenge before the trust vote. So you are really saying that Mr. Uddhav Thakre resigned only because he was called upon by the governor to face a trust vote. Uh, I am grateful after I had filed a petition, after I had made it sub judice, and after I had said this is completely unknown to law. Don't allow it to go on. And you are frankly accepting the fact that well, you resigned because the trust vote was going to go against. When you do an illegal act, yeah, you, the consequence of that is known to me. The CM's participation or absence of participation would not dilute that fundamental illegality. If it is illegal, it is illegal. How, how does my non-participation validate the act of the governor? Is the core question. That is the correct legal answer. Today, the illegal government is running. There is no elections. Then, and the person who otherwise, suppose the lordship holds the governor to be bad, then a person not entitled to be holding the post, holding the post of chief minister. How can Malus, of all courts, the Supreme Court accept such illegality? Malus, if your lordship's malus, your lordship's powers are unique in this country. In that, even your lordship's malus can go beyond the law, not contrary to law, beyond the law. Then, malus, what's the point if the governor's actions are held to be illegal? Actually, your lordship would be malus giving a perig declaration and accepting that the illeg illegality has borne the fruits of its illegality and people have enjoyed it. So, I challenge malus a validity of an act. Let us say the governor's act. Let me say competence of a legislation. Let me say fundamental rights. Versus the eligibility of certain people to act under the act, to sit there and act. Your lordship under 189 protects the second, not the first. If the governor's action is bad, will 189 ever protect it, Malus? Mr. Malus, my learned friends, two of them argued at great length on 189. Did they answer the question? Ultimately, the core question, my lord, is just formulated either way, this way or that way. Is the governor valid or not valid? If your lordship holds him to be invalid, 189 comes only after your lordship holds something to be invalid. Otherwise, it doesn't come into play. It can be said in the context of the vote in the House. So, with respect to exactly. So, therefore, no, no. 189, your lordships can and may, and in this case, perhaps should, in the intervening period of seven, eight months, the decisions taken by an otherwise illegally constituted government may be valid under 189. That's the real commonsensical way of implementing it, Balas. I am not suggesting that somebody's appointment is quashed, somebody's transfer is gone, somebody's policy decision. So what Maras, you're really saying, is, policy, Dr. Singh, what that is you're saying is that Article 189 recognizes a de facto doctrine. De facto doctrine. What the de facto doctrine does is to legitimize the acts of an authority whose original appointment is found to be invalid. Subsequently found to Subsequently be invalid. Found Correct. Correct. But that does not validate the original appointment That's itself. The, or calling for... The, that goes back to the same thing, Willis. First act was what? The governor being approached, governor calling. 
the two others are consequences voting is a consequence of the governor's illegal act so is the oath taking if the original act is bad and your lordships can't validate it then this will not validate the vote because the consequence is bad the consequence of an illegal origin cannot validate the illegal origin and similarly so 189 the, cannot cons so what you're saying is that in if the calling of the voting in the house itself is subject that's to that's just how my lords formulated was right or wrong governor's action a no basis and b if basis means it is wrongly applied etc but that's affirmation of the house right then what i mean i still have a affirmation is coming that's okay. this section bomai dealt with the affirmation all right okay. bomai said we hold something to be illegal let's kindly give a minute this is very interesting but there after parliament is approved it exactly the same thing how can we quash it said no sorry will be quashed so this is balas the three points are covered prohibitory affirmative 189 and balas resignation now balas the fourth point is this balas prospective and retrospective of the ec they are all important queries which fell from my lord my lord chief just asked this question more than once balas petition is filed on 19th july 17th february is the order now balas the order to be retroactive question number 1 retroactive from when there are three possibility retrospectivities look at the consequence when the lordship doesn't hold it to be without the three one is it is retroactive from the date the shiva sena was recognized as a 29a political party that is 1990 or 92 i'm giving you three alternatives i'm not uh, because today i am the election commission i hold that this is the shiva sena if it is retroactive logically it should go to the date when 29a but let's leave that second it goes back to 21st june when this action started and third it goes to 19 july when the petition was filed there are only three possibilities balas in all of these the consequences would be that balas actually everything i would be guilty but i i am actually i i by i i mean people who have remained Mr. Thakre, I'm just using a phrase because there's no other phrase available. And people who have left. Now, the people who have followed the tenth schedule and remained with Mr. Thakre would be actually liable for disqualification if a lordship relates back that. So, a lordship would be giving a premium to those who follow the tenth schedule, and the people who have not followed the tenth schedule will protect their disqualification also and disqualify me also. Because your lordships will not avoid the inevitable consequence by balance. Of course, your lordships' words can always balance, but it, that's the logical consequence of retroactivity. They would make an arc of immunity for their own disqualification and actually be liable because the party from 19th July, any whip, any order, everything, I have violated because I am not the party from 19th July, and therefore, balance, I am liable to something, or from actually logically speaking, from the origin. Therefore, Malus, this huh? and Malus, it would have the strange effect of an election of Mr. Udav Thakre in 2018. Would also go without there being a fresh election and seating him. Everything will go, Malus. No adjudication by the mere act of recognition relating back either to 1990s or to 2000 and uh, Malus 19th of July or to 23. Well, uh, I mean, twenty-first uh, of June. Well, there would be well, it's chaos. The consequences, well, it's are, and apart from the fact, well, that this is clearly textually not well, it's intended by the symbols order. The fourth and the last, well, under this head, I'm not on the next point. Under this head, it would also destroy not collateral damage, well, it's major direct damage. It would destroy the relating back, which is held by a lordship of Rajendra Rana. Now, note this, well, note this. Not a single judgment, even of any high court, leave aside Supreme Court, says that the election commission will relate back. A constitution bench has held the field for very long, saying a disqualification ten schedule order relates back. If your lordship were today to do this, your lordship would be giving primacy to an order under a symbols order, with any judicial precedent not saying so. Versus a constitutional provision already held by a constitution bench to relate back, and your lordships cannot reconcile 
a relation back of disqualification with a relation back of the EC. It can't be reconciled. Today, Malaz, suppose tomorrow the speaker disqualifies Mr. ABC. It is common ground by Rajendra Rana and many other cases. It relates back to Malaz, uh, June 23, uh, 22. But there cannot be disqualification because by then your Lordship Malaz also would be applying a EC order retroactively. Therefore, Malaz, your Lordship already has jurisprudence and a precedent. Prospective according to you. Right. Then, Malaz, the fifth aspect is this political party and legislative party. Yes. Now, Malaz, F is a very important part. Actually, it goes to the root. This is the political party versus legislative party debate, but from an angle different than Mr. Sibbles. The tenth schedule defines a legislature party in terms of a political party. That is, Malaz, conclusive, I say. According to me, I may be wrong. It's conclusive. Legislature party is defined in terms of the political party. I've quoted the definition. And well as your lordship is concerned with a whip. Whip is peculiarly a political party activity.